Hi, Word Nerds. My name is Spencer, and you are listening to and maybe watching this show called The Dictionary. I read the dictionary. I explain it. I talk about it. I be silly. Let's be silly together. The first word in this episode is equatorial or equatorial, E-Q-U-A-T-O-R-I-A-L, adjective from 1664. 1A, of, relating to, or located at the equator, or an equator, the equator of the Earth, or just the equator of another celestial body like a planet or the sun or a star or a moon. Also, there's more. Being in the plane of the equator, as in a satellite in equatorial orbit. So that's a satellite that's going around the Earth. In this case, we can only talk about the Earth, but it's and it's going around right above the equator. How many miles up above the Earth? Right around the equator. It's an equatorial satellite. 1B, of originating in or suggesting the region around the geographic equator. So anything that's just about the equator is equatorial. 2a, being or having a support that includes two axles at right angles to each other with one parallel to the Earth's axis of rotation, as in an equatorial telescope mount. Equatorial telescope mount. Having support that includes two axles at right angles to each other with one parallel to the Earth's axis of rotation. So if the axis of rotation is like this one's parallel. I mean, yeah, how else would you? I don't really understand. A tele, an equatorial telescope mount, it's going to be mounted. But how is it equatorial exactly? Because it's parallel to the axis? I don't know. Uh, okay, 2B. Extending in a direction essentially in the plane of a cyclic structure... As of, we have an example, as of cyclohexane, extending in a direction essentially in the plane of a cyclic structure. So this has got to be something with chemistry, as in equatorial hydrogens. It says compared to axial, A-X-I-A-L, which would be related to the axis if we're talking about the Earth. The axis of the Earth goes between the North Pole and the South Pole. The Earth spins along the axis. And so that's perpendicular to the equator. The equator goes this way. The axis goes this way. The axis goes up and down, north-south. The equator goes around. Around, it's like a flat, it's like a dinner plate in the middle of the Earth. Uh, yeah, that's, that's equatorial, related somehow to the equator. And my, uh, my sound effect today is going to be... Um, Ooh, we could do we could do something like that. <laughs> it's not exactly what I wanted to do, but it's close enough. Next is equatorial plane. Two words, noun from circa 1892. The plane. My watch. By the way, it is January 18th at 7:20 a.m. That's when I'm recording this. So equatorial plane is the plane perpendicular to the spindle of a dividing cell and midway between the poles. So we are not talking about the Earth or a celestial body. We're talking about the place where a cell divides. It splits probably right there in the middle, um, and it is midway between the poles. Just like the Earth, North Pole, South Pole, the, equ the equator is in the middle. It's halfway between, but we're talking about yeah, it's the plane perpendicular to the spindle of a dividing cell. What is the, sp the spindle? I'm going to guess is kind of like the axis of the Earth. Could you imagine if the Earth was a cell and it divided at the equator? So it like sort of sucked in itself there. And then the top half, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, each became full new Earths. That would be crazy be a fun, weird uh, idea for a sci-fi movie. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just remembered my sound effect. 
<laughs> Again, not what I wanted to do. Uh, next is equatorial plate. Noun from 1882. One, the synonym is metaphase plate. And number two, the synonym is equatorial plane. That's the one that we just read. So this is where the cell is dividing. Uh, metaphase plate. Maybe that's the... I, I would guess that's the same thing as... Maybe, well, maybe I don't know. Something uh, Something's meta and it's phasing. I don't know. <laughs> this, is, this sound effect is not working today. It's not working at all. Mm, ah, whatever. Let's just keep on doing it. Um, okay. The next word is... Oh, this is a fun and interesting word equator word equator word okay it is spelled equator ward one this is one word equator and then w-a-r-d at the end but it's pronounced equator word okay adverb or adjective from 1875 toward or near the equator as in currents flowing equator word also is in equator word wins. So yes, toward, forward. There's other words that have ward at the end. So this is just somehow like toward the equator. Yeah, toward or near the equator. So the currents in the water are going around the equator or towards the equator. Uh, the winds are going towards the equator. They, they rotate as the earth is spinning. They go towards the equator and they rotate around in certain directions depending on which hemisphere you're talking about. Equator word. It's a fun word. <laughs> Next is equary. Equary or equary. Yeah, I think either one of those is fine. E-Q-U-E-R-R-Y. Equary noun from 1591. Number one, an officer or a prince, no, of a prince, an officer of a prince or noble charged with the care of horses. This person is working for the prince or some sort of noble person, and they just have to take care of the horses. That's what they do, that's their job. Number two, an officer of the British royal household in personal attendance on the sovereign or a member of the royal family. So this one said nothing to do with horses, even though that's clearly where the word came from. They're just uh, a person who works for a royal family. Uh, I think that's an officer of the British royal household. Yeah. In personal attendance on the sovereign or a member of... Of, yeah, so they're they're in attendance. They're helping out. They're, you know, we like to use the word butler sometimes, uh, at least here in America. I don't know, you know, but it's somebody who's working at the house, taking care of things, helping the guests, doing the laundry, cooking the food, the personal assistant, driving, all those sorts of things. The equerry. Now, we I think we know this is from the horse word, but what specifically... Uh, let's see, we've got Middle French, écurie, which uh, means squires, collectively squires. Also, duties of a squire. Also, care of horses. Also, stable. So that word means all those things. Uh, that is from es esquire, uh, which means squire. And there's more at the word esquire. So, did the word squire come from horses? I mean, I, you know, we're going to see more horse words here. Um, but I guess what maybe that word didn't mean horse or the, the original word that these words are coming from didn't mean horse. Maybe it, maybe it meant squire, but also there's care of horses in there and stable. So, yeah, it seems like it's somebody who's taking care of the horses and is also a squire, and maybe the duties of the squire was to take care of the horses in the stable. Okay. And, you know, my sound effect is not quite a horse sound. <laughs> How do you do a horse sound? <laughs> I don't know. I can't do it. I can't do it. Should we Should we bring up a uh, horse sound? Let's just, let's just all listen to an actual horse sound. 
And this is this is going to be wonderful. Horse sounds for kids. This is what we want. Let's hear. Yeah, I couldn't do that. That's good. T good times. Just, you you can only listen to those if you are a kid. Um. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. The next word is equestrian. First form adjective from circa 1681. 1A of relating to or featuring horseback riding, as in equestrian Olympic events. They're hopping up on their horse, riding horses. They might be shooting arrows or shooting guns off of the top of the horse, or they might be jousting. I don't think jousting was ever in the Olympics. That would be different. Uh, what other Olympic events have equestrian or have horseback riding in them? I don't know. I can't. I mean, they're very strong and sturdy. I can't fully support it, but but, but I, especially horse racing. Anyway, uh, 1B. This is archaic, and it is just riding on horseback. And the synonym is mounted. So I guess if you are just on a horse back, you are mounted on a horse, something that's on the back of a horse, a chimp riding a horse, that would be equestrian. It would be an equestrian chimp. 1C. Representing a person on horseback. Representing a person on horseback. What, resen, rep, what represents a person on horseback? Hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to think of how you could use that in context. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. Number two, of, relating to, or composed of knights. And these knights are spelled with a K. So these are the ones in the armor riding horses. These would be the ones jousting. Probably not the Olympic people. Uh, yes, related or composed of knights. Something that is just composed of knights, made up of knights, related to knights. That's equestrian because they love to ride horses. This is from the Latin equester, which means of a horseman. From eques, which means horseman. From equus, which means horse. And there's more at the word equine. Now, I saw no connections to the previous word, equery, which had its own etymology, which was still kind of related to horses, but that was it took a different, it was Middle French, different word, different language, different meanings. So, but there was, there's some connection there. There's got to be, there's got to be. Okay, yeah, equus is the Latin word for horse. <laughs> ah, it's a little better. The second form of equestrian is a noun from 1774. One who rides on horseback. you just on a horse. You could just call yourself an equestrian. You, that's who you are. That is now you forever and ever. You are an equestrian. Uh, nothing more for that one, but I, I was not familiar with this next word. <laughs> that that's a horse i want to meet the next word is equestrian you do have to emphasize that last syllable equestrian because it is spelled e q u e s t r i e n n e noun from 1823 um let's see about 50 years about 50 years after equestrian, with an A-N, this is a girl or woman who rides on horseback. And you know, I've spoken plenty about these genderized words. Um, the etymology says it's just equestrian plus the suffix E-N-N-E. -N -N -E. um, it says that's from, like in the example, tragedian. Tragedian? It's like tragedy with the e-n-n-e -N -N -E suffix what 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 tra i have to look this up because what is this Trage and how do you say it trud trudgy i don't know it's an actress who specializes in tragic roles i have never heard of that before okay so uh yes we have uh, equestrian is a girl or woman who rides a horseback if you want to use that word for yourself 
If you are a girl or woman, if you identify that way, and you are riding a horse, you can be an equestrian. But also, um, it said it was from the suffix E-N-N-E, and I was wondering, did we ever have that here in the dictionary? No. No, no, no. That was never its own entry, which is interesting. <laughs> The next word is the prefix equi, E-Q-U-I. It means equal, as in equipoise. It also means equally, as in the example, equiprobable. Equiprobable. Wow, these are interesting words that we're going to get to in the next uh, few episodes. <laughs> uh, it's just a horse laughing. Next is equiangular. Equiangular. Uh, this is an adjective from 1660. Having all or corresponding angles equal. As in, mutually equiangular parallelograms. So, are we talking about how having all or corresponding angles equal? So, a parallelogram has those two sides are parallel and maybe those two sides are parallel and so that means that the angles are equal kind of i don't know i need a i need a better visual example i've probably said this before but the dictionary needs pictures more pictures please the book would be this is, this is huge it would be a huge 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 book but we need pictures um yeah Something about angles being equal to either itself, inside of itself, or to another thing. Maybe the these parallelograms are equiangular because their angles match. Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, the next word is equicaloric. Equicaloric. The, the word calorie is kind of in there. Uh, ooh, you could also say equicaloric. If you wanted to adjective from 1940 capable of yielding equal amounts of energy in the body as in equicaloric diets so these are capable of yielding equal amounts of energy so these diets there's two different diets and they are equicaloric because basically they have the same amount of calories when you put them in your body you eat the food chompy chomp chomp it goes into your body you're getting the same amount of calories whichever diet you choose. But there's other factors, you know? There's fats and cholesterol and sugars and carbs and all those things. They could have the same amount of calories, but all the other things could be different. I don't really know how that stuff works, but I'm pretty sure that's accurate. Okay. <laughs> the next word is equid or equid. E-Q-U-I-D, noun, from circa 1889. Any of a family of perisodactyl, perisodactyl mammals consisting of the horses, asses, zebras, or zebras, and extinct related animals. The family name is Equidae with an uh, A-E at the end, equidae. Uh, and so, yes, this is from the new Latin word equidae, which is the family name from the word equus, which, uh, with a capital E, which is the genus name. Uh, when we know it means horse, it means horse. So these other things, they're not technically horses, but they are related to the horses. They look like horses, sort of, mostly, and so they are all part of the uh, the family and the genus that's horse related. Horses, asses, zebras, and extinct related animals. Of course, I'm going to have to post some pictures of these equids, these these horses and others. The, definitely some asses. We got to get some asses on the social media at Dictionary Pod. Equids. Um, okay, next word. <laughs> Next word is equidistant or equidistant. Adjective from 1556. One, equally distant. 
That's literally, we just took those words equally distant and smooshed them together with a compressor thing. Uh, as in a location equidistant from two major cities. Maybe you are visiting a friend or you are you want to visit somebody who lives in a major city and you're in a major city. They don't got to be major cities. Basically, what we're looking for is the halfway point. Let's meet up for lunch. Let's, we, it's too far. It's too far to drive from one place to the other place, but I can drive halfway. So we want to find a place that's equidistant, the same distance from both of those places. That's the best place to be. Number two, representing map distances true to scale in all directions. I don't totally... Representing map distances true to scale? Now, that's not... That doesn't mean that they are the same as in the real world. The scale is the... You gotta shrink it down. Hmm. True to scale in all directions. I don't fully understand this definition. If I can find a little bit more information, what, what you know, I got to just do a little googling and I don't want to do that right now, but I have to I need a visual. So yeah, if I find something, I'll put it in the show notes for this equidistant definition representing map distances true to scale in all directions. In all directions, it's the same distance, I'm not sure. Equidistantly is an adverb. We drove to meet each other equidistantly. Uh, let's see. Any additional etymology that... I mean, it, okay. There's one... Uh, what's his Latin word? Uh, distare. Uh, and that means to stand apart. That's interesting. Um, that that I guess that's... Maybe distant came from that word. So this word also came from distare. To stand apart. You stand over there. I can't stand your smell, and you can't stand my smell. So let's stand apart from each other, and then we will be equidistant. No, you need another thing to show that the distances are equal. Okay. Uh, it's a horse sound effect time. <laughs> okay. The next word is equilateral or equilateral or equilateral, equilateral. Some people just take out a whole syllable. Adjective from 1570. One, having all sides equal, as in an equilateral triangle. Also as in an equilateral polygon. All the sides are the same length. Um, yep, just all sides equal. That's what it is, a triangle that has all sides equal it's it's i think it's automatically going to have all the angles are the same size too the same uh angle uh so that would also be probably equi or equal angular because they are all the same um i believe it would be 60 60 degrees for each angle in a in an equi equilateral triangle Polygon, though, it's different. Polygon could be any amount of sides, but as long as all the sides are the same length, then we're good. We're good on the equilateral definition. A stop sign would be equilateral. Uh, it says to see the triangle illustration, which we will have to wait for for a very long time. Why is there a triangle illustration? Okay, number two, having all the faces equal. All the faces, as in an equilateral polyhedron. So a triangle, a polygon, that's a two-dimensional shape. It's flat, but this is talking about all the faces. This is, a, this is a 3D object. A cube would be equilateral. All the faces are the same. A, a Rubik's cube would be equilateral. Um, polyhedron, I think that's just like, it's just any sort of shape that has multiple sides is a polyhedron. A dodecahedron, is that the one that's got 12? One of those D&D &D Dungeons and Dragons 20-sided die, that would be poly... No, that would be... Well, it'd be a polyhedron, but it would also be equilateral. Uh, let's see. This is from the Latin iqui, 
prefix, which um, plus the Latin word latere or latus, which means side, and there's more at the word lateral. Like the muscles on your side are the lats. They're, there's a longer word for them, but they're, they're lats because they're on the side of your body. <laughs> Equilateral hyperbola. Two words. Noun from 1880. A hyperbola with the asymptotes at right angles. And we we got to maybe look at a visual of this because because what? Equilateral or equilateral hyperbola. I like to say hyperbola. Um, okay, okay, I'm starting to see. So a hyperbola is like a curved... Think if you if you did the geometry and algebra and stuff it, uh, if you on a chart it's like a U shape usually and in this case the the shape of it the angle of it if you were to get rid of the curve and make it pointy it would go to a right angle a ninety degree angle let's see can I show it that way yeah I might just post a picture of this on social media but then if you curve it. It's a hyperbola, and it just it just sort of curves out real far, real far. Anyway, that's an equilateral hyperbola, and for some reason they thought that it was an important enough word to put in the dictionary. <laughs> what is all this nonsense? Okay, the last word is equilibrant. Equilibrant, you can also say e. You're still emphasizing the second syllable, equilibrant. You can also say equilibrant, equilibrant, spelled E-Q-U-I-L-I-B-R-A-N-T. Equilibrant, noun from 1883. A force that will balance one or more unbalanced forces. What sort of force are we talking about? A physical force? If I push down on the table, that's a force? Or is this uh, a gravity force, electromagnetism force? What force is this? Some sort of force called an equilibrant that will, that will balance other forces that are unbalanced, and this is going to bring balance to the force. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right. Hey, you know what? I'm going to pick a word of the episode now. Today we had equatorial, equatorial plane, equatorial plate, equator word, equery, equestrian, 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 equi, equiangular, equicaloric, equid, equidistant, equilateral, equilateral hyperbola, equilibrant. Well, I hated all of these words. No, I didn't hate them. I just, nothing just really jumped out at me as one that I really connected with, you know? Um, so I'm just going to have to pick the one that I think is fun to say, which is equator word. Equator word is a word about the equator going towards the equator. Equator word. That's the end of the dictionary part of this episode, and here comes the movie part of the episode. Um, let's see, where did I leave off? Here we go, All of Us Strangers. Beautiful, beautiful movie. Um, it's not for kids. It's an adult movie. It's just, oh, it's just heart-wrenching, isn't it? Um, let's say another one. Oh, we rewatched. The original, the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory from 1971. Can you believe that movie is over 50 years old? Amazing. Oh, I just so appreciate this one. We we watched it because um, we were getting ready to take my mother-in-law to see the new Wonka movie the next day. And uh, Sharon had ne only seen Willy Wonka once. Willy Wonka once? And I, this, you know, this movie like semi defined my childhood, loved it, loved the, the chocolate and the songs and the weirdness and the sugary sweet and all the stuff, the weird visuals. Anyway, we watched it and I just so appreciate its oddness and its silliness and its humor and all And the, oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. Okay. That's the end of this episode. Thank you very much 
for still watching or listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye.